Hey, what's up, Data Geeks? I'm here today to talk about this weird myth that's popping up online about electric vehicles not being good for the planet. And it starts with the idea that actually pretty soon we're all going to be driving electric vehicles anyways. Bloomberg's new energy finance division said in just about six years, the cost of vehicles for electric cars will be cheaper than the cost of an ICE vehicle. That's an internal combustion engine. We'll just call them gas powered vehicles for our purposes today. And that's because the battery prices are coming down. So when you look back in 2010, the cost per kilowatt hour was about $1,000 for a battery for an electric car. And now it's closer to $200. So that is a huge drop in only five years. Six years from now, the price is gonna continue to drop. As that price drops, EV sales are shooting through the roof. Back in 2011, we had about 50,000, and back in 2015, we had 450,000. So that is a huge improvement over just that time span, not to mention the near 500,000 reservations that are out there for the Model 3 from Tesla. And this is the only time I've ever seen, and probably anyone else ever has, where people are standing in line waiting for a car. Now, this is all over the world. People are even standing in the rain, you know, toughing the storms to put in a reservation on a car that they may be able to get two years down the road. Point being, there is huge demand for electric vehicles. And as the price comes down and demand goes up, they eventually will overtake and some estimate that by 2040, 35% of all cars in the world will be electric. That is a huge number. That is a game changer. So the electric vehicles are coming. Now, will we have the infrastructure? The report from Bloomberg actually had a good caveat there that we need a good charging infrastructure. In the US, we have close to 100,000 chargers. And back in 2011 is really when you saw the outlets and the locations start to pop up. In the EU, there's at least 72,000 chargers. Now, other parts of the world, maybe India or Latin America, it may be a bit harder because there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to come up. The next big assumption from the Bloomberg report was that the tax subsidies from every country out there that's doing this would continue. Here in the United States, it's really uncertain. And I would say in a lot of parts of the world, as the political environment has drastically shifted over some major elections that have changed the landscape for people's position and whether or not these types of subsidies will continue. Here in the US, there's a $7,500 tax credit for all new electric vehicle purchases. However, that was limited to 200,000 cars and those are long gone. If you don't already have a Model 3 reservation or you don't have already a Bolt or some other car, chances are you're not going to get it. Now, will it continue? Will President Trump, the incoming president here in the United States, actually you know, renew this plan? We'll see. Uh, but signs are saying dicey. Other countries, though, like Germany, may actually ban all gas-powered cars as soon as 2030. But that's a bit speculative, and that's more about them reducing their overall CO2 emissions. This is one way for them to do that. So we'll see if that actually happens. Other governments, though, like the Dutch government and the Norwegian government, are talking about this. And in fact, Norway has a huge program to help people get electric vehicles. So they're extremely popular over there. If you're from Norway, let me know. I'd love to see a pic. Send it over. Even China is getting in on this. So lots of countries, big countries all over the world have huge incentives and tax subsidies for electric vehicles. If those continue to keep prices low, I would say that the electric vehicle is really gonna become the more commonplace car within maybe 10 years. But does this help the planet? Well, Adam Conover, who does Adam Ruins Everything on College Humor, had a video recently about how buying an electric car isn't really all that green. But really, let's give Adam a break here. You remember when we create videos like this, like the one I'm doing now or the one he did there, there was a team of people behind this. So let's lay off the personal attacks on him, okay? You may disagree, but we need to have a discussion and personal attacks don't help that at all. So Adam argues that the electric vehicles don't really help the planet that much. And this is a pretty common thing you hear from climate change skeptics, as well as some of the more right-wing political groups out there, including people like Prager University. The main two points that this boils down to is that making an electric vehicle is worse for the environment than a gas-powered vehicle, which is true mining all the minerals to make the batteries and all that kind of thing is worse for the environment. It does produce more CO2. 
and we'll look into this. Now the other part of it though, is that we're shifting the emissions from the tailpipe to the power plant. And while many think that that is a disadvantage, that that is a problem, it actually is a benefit. You see, once we actually do that, once we shift where the CO2 gets generated from our homes in our cars to an actual central location like an electricity grid, that grid, as it improves, it has an exponential, has a ripple effect on every electric vehicle that uses it for its fuel. So shifting over to the grid for your source of fuel, of transportation, instead of the gas pump is actually part of the plan because that is how we can make a dramatic change in the CO2 emissions really, really quickly. This isn't to mention that electrical energy created by burning fossil fuels in a power plant is about 40% efficient. If you follow that by transmitting it to your house at 93% efficiency and then using it in your electric vehicle at 92% efficiency, the total efficiency for an electric vehicle is around 34%. Now compare that to a gas car. Crude oil refineries operate at 75% efficiency and gasoline distribution might cause another 6% energy loss. Now, since the internal combustion engines are only 20% efficient, the total efficiency for a gas powered car would be about 14%. So that is a huge change, 34 to 14%. And people will think of it, oh, 20%, that's not that big. That's a huge number, 20% decrease. That's insane. You can't really think about any other way to do that. This is one of the biggest ways that we can reduce our CO2 emissions. And it's actually it's pretty simple. It doesn't rely on any new battery tech or any other fancy thing. It's just the willpower to keep this going. Now, there was a great study by the Union of Concerned Scientists, and they were able to calculate the total CO2 emissions for the manufacturing of the cars to the operation of the cars, including the battery manufacturing, and look at the actual electricity grid in the United States and find out what would it take for a gas-powered car to compete with an electric car. And what they found is that at 66% of the country live in a place where it would require the gas-powered car to get 51 miles per gallon or better. In California, where I live, it'd be 87 miles per gallon. In the Northwest, it'd be 94 miles per gallon. Up in New York, it'd be kind of crazy. It'd be 79 miles per gallon or 135 if you're in upstate. Overall, in the United States, for a gas powered car to compete with an electric vehicle in terms of the CO2 that it emits in its lifetime, it would need to get 68 miles per gallon. So there really isn't a gas powered car that can compete on average with electric cars when it comes to the CO2 that they emit over their lifetime. When we look at not only the operation, but the battery manufacturing and everything else, which is what the skeptics try to claim, you can see that a mid-size gas car compared to a mid-size 84 mile an hour EV, something like a Nissan Leaf, you have a 51% reduction in CO2 emissions, mostly based on the operation. Again, the EV is worse for the environment when you just consider the manufacturing of the vehicle. But when you consider the operation of the car, you're at a 51% reduction there. If you compare that maybe on the full size scale, we have a full size gas car compared to say a Tesla, you have a 53% reduction. So the overall reduction is 50 plus percent in almost any scenario you run compared to a gas car. So the argument about a gas car being better for the environment in terms of the manufacturing of it, that's true. However, because the grid is continuing to get cleaner and cleaner, it actually makes the EV better and better. And this is where, again, I see shifting the emissions from the tailpipe to the power plant as a benefit. If we wanted to compare these three different ranges and say where the emissions equivalent is 31 to 40 miles an hour, we'd be looking at some typical cars. The Honda Fit gets 36 miles per gallon, the Ford Focus gets 36, the Chevy Cruze Eco gets 33. So this is pretty common, right? But this is actually a small percentage of the United States. And when you look at the next category of 41 to 50 miles per gallon, we're talking about really fuel efficient cars like the Prius, the Accord Hybrid, and the Volkswagen Jetta Hybrid. But when you come to where six 66% of the country live, we're in that 51 plus miles per gallon range, and there is not a gasoline or diesel model out there that compares to an electric vehicle. Now, electric cars are far from perfect. 
and there are plenty of ways and reasons to critique them and criticize them. I mean, that's part of what I do. But let's get real here. There is no way that a gas car can really compete with an electric car on CO2 emissions over its lifetime, especially as the grid continues to get better and better. And when you look, you can see that coal is dropping, natural gas is going up, and, and that change from that low renewable grid to the high renewable grid for a mid-size EV that gets about 84 miles per charge, just that change there is a 42% reduction in the CO2 emitted over the lifespan of the car. So when you think about it, as the grid gets better, your car over its lifespan will emit less CO2. Gas cars don't work that way. There's no one way to make all of them better. You have to manufacture them better and buy new ones and all that. And that's just not happening. That model, the gas cars are really the kind of antiquated way of providing fuel and transportation. The electric is the new way and switching that over to something like the grid, which is constantly improving and constantly getting better. That is the right solution to actually have a more sustainable future that produces far fewer CO2 emissions. Many states in the United States also have laws and goals that they've set for themselves to become more renewable over time. So this argument about the EV actually becoming better over time really has some power behind it. California, for example, we're looking to become 50% renewable by 2030. Hawaii wants to be 100% by 2045. And these are big states that currently pollute a ton. So as that goes, and as other states come on board, you're just gonna see the effectiveness and the efficiency of the cars get better and better. But what about solar? As much as 32% of EV owners actually power their cars from their own solar panels. So this is another thing that is just the cherry on top to this argument that EVs are far better for the environment than gas powered cars. As solar becomes more prevalent and cheaper, this is really gonna compound this factor where the cars will actually emit almost zero emissions after they're actually in operation, making them substantially better for the environment than a gas powered equivalent. Some cities, even like Santa Monica and San Francisco here, are regulating that all new construction come with solar. That's commercial and residential. So with all that said, I hope that you would agree that the electric vehicle today and going into the future is gonna be far better for the environment by producing less and less CO2 through its lifespan. If you have an EV and you get it from solar, I'd love to hear your story. If you're on the fence about buying one, check out some of my other videos. I do a lot of comparisons to try to help you break that down. And if you're new to the Data Geek family, please subscribe. If you're already a member, go ahead and like this video down below, share it with all your friends, and leave me a comment. I'd love to have a discussion with you. Okay, lastly, remember that if you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you back here next time.